Welcome back, Survivors. I am the Survival Vis, and welcome back to Monster Hunter World. Because of the showcase we did with the light bow guns, and I'm still working towards getting the heavy bow guns, we're going to take a step in between and show off the bows of Monster Hunter World. So here I am, just in my trademark little hat and our nice high rank Puke Puke armor. Just kind of show off some of the looks that I enjoy more that you don't see in Endgame because of, well, they just don't have the same value of sorts. But whenever Iceborne arrives on PC, that'll probably help change that. So what we're going to do is show off all of the bow's looks and go over them a bit. And to start off, we're going to be using the alloy bow from the metal, or, well, just the metal tree of the bows. So I'll try to get a nice good look here. As you can see, it's a very simple design, but I really do like a new addition that the bows basically got was this little crest or shield over your palm. Now, it's kind of hard to see how you could use the slinger come iceborne with it, but I really like the look of just having something as a little bit of a handguard. And as you can see, the arrows are actually on the outside of the bow to fire, so that's not too bad at all. It's a nice, simple, base look. Let me just pull up the info for you on it. So the alloy bow, 204 attack. It does have the two two slots in it with a hidden element of thunder. And it does give you close range and power coatings to start with. So it's not a bad bow. Pretty nice basic once you make along the line start with that. From there, we're going to equip the next one. Let me just head to the box quickly. So next, we'll go right down the line to Doom Shaft. As can probably already tell by all of the spikes to it, this is Nergigante's final bow look, and it is quite a look. As you can see, it's the twin horns to basically make the one limb, as basically a mouth opening up to show off that impressive maw. The spikes and everything, it just has that really nice sinister, barbaric kind of look all of the Nergigante armor has and the weapons have. So a very good weapon design, Looks very well, although you might not see the bow used all that often. The reason for that is because it is a dragon bow, and dragon element, it kind of depends what monster you go after. So Doom Shaft is the name of it. It has 240 attack to start once you get it to the end of the line. It gives you the dragon element for that. It does have a high elder seal, so it may be used against some elder dragons. Although the elder seal, I don't feel like it's as important as always needed or necessary. Like, you can probably get away without using the Elder Seal once you learn the Elder Dragons a bit more. As for its coating, it does have close range and power to it. It only has one one-slot thing, though, but it does allow you some augmentations to outfit it a little more. Overall, a really welcome design for Nergigante's bow, and just what Monster Hunter can really excel at in giving you a really cool weapon that shows off the monster the parts in that are from. So, let me change out to the next one for you guys. And that is going to be the Archer's Dance, or Kulu Yaku's Bow. And as you saw with the light bow guns, the bows also have the same kind of... I guess you could call it a drawback, aesthetic, etc. to it. Where you can easily see the metal bow underneath... But you do have a few Kuluyaku parts to kind of disguise it. It's not bad. It's kind of where I'm torn, because on the one hand, the Kuluyaku skin and the feathering is nice if you look at it front on. But when you get to the side, you really see things. It would have been nice to have a little more disguising if you're going to do that way. Like, don't have just this flat, bland crest to it. Maybe you've done something where it's like a Kuluyaku feathers coming off it or something more. It's the fact that you can see the base so clearly underneath, it just feels like you're kind of dressing up a weapon for looks rather than function. And that's, I think, where a lot of the criticism for Monster Hunter World's weapon design is coming from. They don't feel like weapons that are actually completely made from the monster you hunted. They're more like you just accessorized your weapon to have a few features to it. Moving on, we'll show you the difference, because here is Gigacles. As you might be able to tell from the little... Almost Stegosaur-like spikes, or... Actually, I'm not even sure what you would... Plates, that's probably it. The plates, and the little nubs on the side of it. This is the Urgon's bow, and as you can see, it really showcases what a monster bow should look like. You can tell this was literally right from the monster, and all the power and step up for um, the other bow designs. A very nice bow. It does probably doesn't see much use. It does have a good attack at 228. The fire element, eh. Actually, that's not a bad. 
not a bad element for it. I think the only reason we might have the sleep coating there is because... Oh, no, looks like... No, it looks like we have that just because a thing for Gigglies. It might have a boost to what it can use for that, but... Yeah, its coatings are close range, sleep blast, one augmentation slot, and one three slot or one three slot decoration slot. Overall, a very nice look, superb design. If you do like Urgen going after him a lot and using weapons that kind of showcase that feel, definitely pick up the bow. Even she, the kind of feels like it rolls up into that little ball of sorts with the design. Moving right along, we'll get to our next piece, and that is going to be the Princess Arrow three. And actually, the thing about Rathian's bow, or Rathian's bow, sorry, is that it is pretty much similar to the metal base bow. But you can see it's much more disguised underneath. You can sort of s actually, or is it a unique design? Because I don't see the same gear system underneath it. I do see the crest and the limbs, as usual. But like I said with Kulu's, that they did something more, you have a little Rathian plate there. I mean, it might have been nicer if it was like a little spike coming out just to add a little bit more to change up the base foundation. But overall, it's not bad. And all of Rathian's bows have sort of been this kind of scales onto the metal base. So I'm okay with this being a Princess Arrow or Rathian's looks for it. We'll take a little look at the equipment info. It has 216 attack with a 10% affinity. It does have a hidden dragon element, which is pretty high. The 240 is a pretty high element to have on a bow. It does have the close range power coatings and does have a boosted poison coating. Slot wise, it is one of your higher ones, gives you a level 2 and a level 1 decoration slot, and does have room for 3 augmentations. Overall, I would have to say if you are looking to use the hidden element for a good dragon bow, or you want to augment this and use the poison feature, it's a good bow to pick up. Look-wise, it is pretty tame, but even paired with Puke Puke, any of the kind of more darker color schemes, it is a nice-looking bow. Moving along, we'll change up and look at what the next one is. The Wrath Slinger. So just like his counterpart, Raytheon, Rathalos' bow is just about the same. The difference, though, you can see is that the little scale plate is a little more pronounced with the color change. And it doesn't really have the same amount of scaling that you saw on... The Princess Arrow, or Raytheon's bow. As you can see, it's more pronounced easily to see the metal base beneath. Much easier to see those little gears I was talking about before. The only thing I have, because again, Rathalos's bows were a lot like this, just a metal beneath, and you can kind of see more of the Rathalos skin and scales and hide to it, is if you could have used the bow tips to be more like the Rathalos's tail spike. Like something that adds a little more of the monster to have that a little bit more shift towards being the monster you hunted than the base you're building it off of. But overall, we'll take a look at the elements. And this is a very good fire bow. As you can see, the attack is 216 on its own. An affinity of 20%, which is a great base to start with. It does have the fire element at 240, so very high fire element. This will probably be one of your, if you're going after a Ball Hazak, a Kirin... Anything that is weak to fire, you'll definitely want to be thinking about maybe using the Wrath Slinger 3. It does have the close range and power coatings and poison, but no boost to it. And for slot, it gives you the level 1 decoration. There are two augmentation slots, so you could... No, oh, excuse me, customize them a little more. But overall, I do have to admit, it's a nice little counterpart to Raytheon. Could use a little more to distinguish it a bit, but it is what it is. Now the Water Shot. And unfortunately, you're basically getting a look like, if not exact, maybe a small texture change to have some bits brighter. But unfortunately, nothing about this screams that it was made from Geratidus parts. And Geratidus is the only water monster in world right now. So, I can't really go over too much to say, like, ooh, design is unique and special, and it's just a color retexture. At least for the equipment info, we can go into that. As you can see, it has to have a high water element, with it being the only water element in bow. Attack of 204, 240 water element. It does have a level 3 decoration slot, which is nice. And it is a little more limited in your coatings. Only close range and a power. But it does have three augmentation slots, so you could make this your... Well, you'll actually, I think you kind of have to make that your water bow. Because unless you go after Kul'Turoth for one of the gold recolors, that's all you really get for that element for World for now. 
But next, we're going to go to a very nice design bow, the Legia Snow Fletcher. This is the last bow in Legiana's bow line. As you can see, it's... Actually, yeah, you can see that it's a new, unique model of its own. It has the splitting limbs out from the sides. I don't think you really get that until very late in Legiana's line. It does feature those nice designs of the diamond, and all, even the wings kind of coming back, too. It is a superb looking bow. I really have to commend that. When it World did do the unique designs for the weapons, they did do them very well. And I think that's where a lot of the disappointment is with Iceborne. Is that they felt like there was so much potential, but they just did the base look kind of dress up in a way. Anyway, we'll show you the Snow Fletcher's stats. It is a lower attack at 180, but it excels at Ice Element with 390. Now for bows, you'll generally want to go for more element damage than I think you'll want attack, because when you're using bows, element is your big strong suit. Unlike the light bow gun where you, well, light and the heavy bow gun where you have more limited ammo, the light does have rapid fires, which can help element damage, but the heavy not so much. Bows are going to rely mostly on their status or element that's attached right to the weapon. Coatings, you do have a nice mix. A close range, a power, poison, and sleep. No decoration slots, however, and only one augmentation. But this is definitely going to be your ice power bow, in my opinion. I, Kushala has a bow, but I don't think the ice element is anywhere near the 390 that you'd like for it. Overall, even the quiver has that nice Legiana wing tips and kind of elegance to it. Moving along, let's get the next bow in line. Here we have the Hunter's Proud bow. And this is one of the bone tree weapons for the bow. As you can see, it does have the little base of sorts with the crest. The bow limbs, though, have just been changed to, well, bone. Kind of featuring the name. It is the base that you'll see a number of the bone weapons kind of building up along. Stat-wise, it does have 216 attack, which is pretty good. What's really surprising is the hidden element of water for 360. If you do have... The hidden element skill built in your weapons, or you're getting that to level 3. This could be a very good water bow to use for your hunts. It does offer level 3 decoration slot and a small defense bonus. For gunners, the elemental damage can be a problem, but it's more the physical that will really ground you into the dust. Especially against things like, say, Devil Joe or Nerd Gigante. They will mess you up if you do not stay out of range. <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry about that. As for coatings, you have a close range, paralysis, and poison. You lack the power, but you still have some augmentation slots, and I think you can add... Actually, I don't know if there's a skill to get power shot to your bows or not, or the power coating. I'm not sure. But it's, again, another little base that'll be worked with. It's a very good early game bow, but unfortunately, it's probably going to show... Actually, we'll show right here that for all of Balthazok's unique weapons, it's just the bone base for when it comes to the bow. Like the light bow gun with Gogoless Whale, you saw that unique look. I'm afraid Balthazok's is just the scales kind of put on it. It does break that up a little more because you do have the claws coming out at the top here. My wish would have been to actually make that top claw more like where the bow string is being attached to. Because... If you're going to do the base look, I think you'd really want to try distinguishing and setting yourself apart from the base model as much as you can, even if you're just layering on top of it. So having something where it looks like the string attaches differently might have helped. As for the little hand crest, it is pretty flat. You can hardly tell that it is some of the Balhazok's more belly scales or underlying scales. I think that would have been a good place to do a little bit of more like a, that kind of red Binding, you see, put a nice big red patch there to try and change that up a little more. Stat-wise, though, this is probably one of your... Uh, maybe one of your better Dragon Element bows. It does have the 228 attack with uh, 270 Dragon. It does have an average Elder Seal. It's not a big hit or miss to use, to be honest. It's hard to say if you'll really see much advantage with it or not. Slots, it does have a level 2. Coatings, you actually get a little more with this one. You get a close range, a power, and a sleep built in. It does offer a couple of augmentations, so you could do a few other tweaks and changes with it. But, again, it's not as unique of a design as you kind of would have liked seeing as once you take a look at some of the other Valhazak weapons, but I guess they kind of had to partition what 
branches got unique weapons and which ones didn't, or which weapons kind of got that treatment. It's kind of hard to say what the process was for that. Moving on, though, this is a good classic that's always been with the Diablo slimes. This is the Ceres Coil Bender. So, to make this, you basically... You'll make a... I think you'll make a look like that has basically just the regular Diablo coloring to it, but for the end of the line, it uses Black Diablo's materials. And as you can see, this is another one like Nergigante's bow, where it just took all the features of that monster and really emphasized it. I just want to see, is there a little gears hidden in there? No, there's not. I was going to say, don't tell me there's actually uh, the base bow hidden in here. But what you have is the Diablo's horn on the top and bottom with a couple of spikes sticking up both limbs to add that lower menacing appearance. And it just feels and looks like a real Diablo's monster bow. It's nothing dressed up, you can tell that you've conquered it and you feel like you're using that power when you're using it. With the size of it too, very nice touches and that design. As for equipment info, this is probably your highest raw damage bow out there. It does have 264. Where it does suffer a little bit is in that affinity, minus 30%. So you will want to try, if you can, fit into your armor set or your loadout, is trying to get that affinity boosted a little bit from the minus 30. Element, it does have a hidden element of ice, which is surprising, because that's the, both Diablos' weakest element, or its weakness in general. Slot-wise, two level 1s, which isn't bad, a nice defense boost of plus 15. Coding-wise, it actually has a nice loadout. Close range and power to get you that oomph, and paralysis to let you really deal that oomph once you land that. It does have one augmentation slot, so you can do a little bit of tweaking, but not too much. Let's move right along then. And that takes us to the Detura String 3. This is Puke Puke's bow. And again, I'd have to admit, if this was more of a, just an early game look, I'd have to say I really do like it, because it gives you that little base that you feel like you could build up from. You have Puke Puke's feathers up along the both limbs, nothing on the crest though. A little bit of almost saddle bindings on the very front there. But aside from that, there's not much else to say. But it feels like if this was the very first of his bows, and you kind of built up to expanding more and getting a unique look, that's, I think, where World really should have put a little more development time in. Monster Hunter has always been a cycle in. You start out without the weapons and the armor, but you go for the monster, you watch your hunter kind of grow through that. You watch yourself gear up into the previous monster you've hunted, armor, skins, hide, scales, get stronger through that and through your weapon. All the armors have excelled at showing that off. Look at Puke Puke's, for example. You can tell that this is his armor set from all of the feathering and that, and it's a nice, unique, kind of ranger-style look. I really do like it. So just very good looks. Unfortunately, the weapons kind of fell a bit short there. But we'll just take a look at the equipment info. Now, this is where it gets a little weird, because it has a 204 attack, but it has a hidden element of blast. And that's a little odd. It does have a level 2 and a level 1 decoration slot. Actually, I think I forgot to show off the archer's arrow stats now that I think about it, because I think that one might have. I might quickly take that back out and take a look, but anyway, coatings are close range, no power, paralysis, and of course, a boost to poison. I am actually surprised that Puke Puke didn't get a poison element for his bow. It kind of felt like it would have been the perfect fit there. It also has three augmentation slots if you want to do a little tweaking to improve on it. And let me just take a quick look back to that archer's dance there. It was just right here. Yeah, it had a hidden element of blast for 270 and a 20% affinity. Some things it did include were close range, paralysis, sleep, and even the blast coating. So, archer's dance was an okay bow to use, but... Again, it's kind of, you wish these were built out a little more to feature a bit more uniqueness to them. Now we'll go to Anja Arc. This is Anja Nathbow, and again, the light bow gun hid the foundation much better, and you can just really see how clear that is in the Anja Nath bow. You kind of have a sort of jaw on the upper limb, a little bit of one on the bottom limb there, and a little patch of skin, but you still see the bow, the base bone bow so clearly on it, and an undecorated crest. I feel like you could have put a, some, a lot of stuff there. You could have put an Anjanath jaw or a little head or something there, just to add for things. And like, 
with how you see the arrow is, there wouldn't be much clipping too if you had a little Ajnaf head almost pointing forward from it. Stat-wise though, this is probably one of the best fire bows in the game. It probably is, to be honest. As you can see, it has 240 attack. The minus 20 affinity, you would like to boost up, but it's not as bad as the Diablos' bow, where it was minus 30. Element, that 390 fire is so, so nice. Especially up against Kuri, Kiran, Balhazak. Anything weak to fire, you'll get a lot of damage out with this bow. It does have a level 2 slot, although... Actually, no, it doesn't have any slots to start with. I put in two slot upgrades to get that level 2, to have a little bit more freedom, making a few tweaks and builds. It does offer close range, power, and blast coating, so can deal out a little bit of punishment with itself. Overall, if you do need to go after something and you want a nice fire bow, definitely look at hunting down your good old Anginas. They will treat you well. Next up, we have the Flying Kadachi Strike Bow. And Toby Kadachi's is actually... Toby got himself a unique bow. I didn't really realize that until now. I thought he was built off of the bone base bow, but looking at it, no, this is Toby's unique look. As you can see, it has a lot of his spikes that you kind of see when Toby gets mad and everything stands up. You have the little bit of undershading, like you, or countershading, like you have on Toby's underbelly. And they actually do look like snake tails coming up for the low limbs, don't they? Overall, I really have to commend the team. I didn't realize this was even a unique bow look until I started taking a close look. And even though it doesn't look that big and standing out-ish, it just looks really nice and sublime. Let's take a look at the stats now from the strike bow at the end of the line. You get a 204 attack, which is pretty good. Affinity, 15%. Very nice. That'll boost the damage output rather well, especially with a 270 thunder element. You need to take down things that are weak to thunder like... Nergagante, I know he's one. Um, Devil Joe is another that's weak to thunder, well, dragon and thunder, but I think dragon is kind of your average good against a lot of the elder dragons, whereas, th whereas certain elder dragons have an element that they're even weaker to. So dragon isn't the kind of end-all it was in previous generations, which is kind of nice because it means you don't have to always use just the best dragon element weapon. You can kind of go out and try to get different ones. But anyway, into coatings, close range and power to give you that oomph with your strikes. And it does have a boosted paralysis, so just like Toby, who tends to get you stunned if you're not careful, you'll be able to deal that out to the monsters right back. Overall, a very nice look for Toby Kodachi's bow, and very nice surprise that that is a truly unique design bow for him. Up next, the Dragonbone Bow 3. Not much to say, just the retextured bone is the or retextured bone bow as its base. Colors are a little bit darker to it. You can kind of see almost as if it's just been tarnished a little bit, left out in some dirt or mud. We'll go right to stat-wise, there's not much to show off there. It is odd because it has a very low attack for endgame bows, only 180, but it has an incredibly high dragon element, 420. So if you do want to do some hunting that a monster is very weak to dragon, you may want to think about the dragon bone bow. It's one of the easier dragon bows to make in the game without having to go after too many Elder Dragons. It does have the two level one slots, so you could try sticking some small gem or small decorations in there to boost things up like attack if you're lucky enough to get those jewels. And three augmentation slots, so plenty of tweaking if you do want to just focus on the attack. As for its coatings, it does have close range, paralysis, and sleep. So you can do a nice mix of status effects to help out your hunter fellow hunters or yourself. Oh, excuse me. Yourself trying to boost things up a little more. And from there, we're going to go to the Dora Sagittari. This is an, another odd look for Kushala Dora, because the ranged weapons gave really weird ones. As you can see, it's like, uh, it's basically a Sagittarius kind of style with a horse for its look. Don't ask me why Kushala is related to horse. I can understand all the scaling and metallic look to it because of Kushala's just design, but none of that screams pony bow, basically. If some people may really like the aesthetic and love the look of it, I just really prefer it to relate a little better to the monster that it comes from. But overall, it is still a unique model that was nice to see come back, given the base looks in-world. Offers a few nice things like that, and equipment info. This is one of your ice bows, probably... I'd say... 
maybe your Ender Ice Bow, although there might be another one that was... Ligionis, I think, will have higher damage output because of the higher ice element. It has 204 base attack, a nice 10% affinity. 240 ice element, so not the highest, but also not the lowest. A good mid-ranger. Slot-wise, it does have level 2 and a level 1, so you have a little bit of tweaking room there. Coatings, though, it only has a close range and a power. As for augmentations, it does have one to give you a minor bit of tweaking. Not a lot, but still a little bit to customize on. And let's move right along to our next one here, which is the Xeno Mitora. Or Mitora. And this is one where it's a little more cleverly disguised. That, well, I say that, although you can see the base bow pretty well underneath it. How it's a little more broken up is because of those little Xeno wings that come off the tips there. It's a little harder to see from the side the top of the bow, so it kind of adds a little more to break up the base weapon look. The quiver, they bolt, well the quivers you can kind of get away with it more because you don't use that as often or see it as much as the main bow. But again, would have been nice if they did something a little more with the crest and the other bow limb. Overall though, it's not a bad look, just a little more tame than you kind of were hoping for. For Xeno though, it has 204 attack, which is a little more on the low range, the affinity of only 15%. Element, Dragon Element with the 180. It is kind of more subpar compared to the rest of those. Where it does excel though, is that it does have the level 2, level 3 slots on its own without anything else. So if you need a little bit more room for some skills, you could think about using the Xeno Mitora. Coding wise, it does have close range and power, but it also has poison and blast. This is more damage focused bow than anything else. And it doesn't have any skills that the weapon comes with, unlike some of the others that Lunastra gives. Or the Lunastra weapons, which are kind of an odd mix that we might show off soon. But next is a really nice unique design for a bow. The Villainous Brace. And I don't believe this has actually been in any other Monster Hunter games. But it is such a fantastically des made design, I love it, to be honest. It's basically a little mini bow from Devil Joe. And as you can see, the quiver is a nice little cage design to add a uniqueness there. But it's almost like you basically have a Devil Joe fist. And you're pulling these wound chains and springs on the inside of it. Like as you can see, they're all kind of coiled up, so it looks just like a spring. Actually, maybe it is... And it kind of unfolds through this chain-like look. With little chains around your wrist, it is just a very fantastic-looking bow. And it doesn't have to be big or amaz... I don't shouldn't say amazing, but big and over-the-top and excessive. Even this is a superb and wonderful design. I would take a lot more bows using this little base sort of hand design than some of the other base looks that we've had, just because it's so different and unique. Let's go into the stat-wise to show it off a little bit more. The Villainous Brace, it does have a pretty high attack to start with, 276. It does have minus 25% affinity, so it's not as bad as the Diablos, but it is still a little low there. Element-wise, 210 is actually an okay mount for Dragon Element, and it does have a high Elder Seal, so you could use this as your little bit of a... Elder Dragon Hunting Bow. Doesn't have any decorations or defense boost. Coding wise, close range, power, and poison. It does have the two augmentation slots, so you could do a little tweaking, maybe make it a heavier hitter, or something else like that. I think we're coming towards the end of the line now. Yeah, so actually all I have is the Empress Arrow Sticks, really. I guess we'll show it off. I thought I had the others too, but maybe they didn't actually really offer that much. But this is Lunastra's little take on the Xeno bow. As you can see, even that little bit of changing the color helps break up the base bow more. Because all it really is is the metal base underneath it. But you don't see it as much because of the color palette swap. There are the nice touches of the turquoise and teal on the limbs. The quiver, again, has that nice little end there. Just a really nice little take on the bow. Equipment info-wise, it is a blast bow. So it does have 216 attack, there is an affinity of 10%, it does have a blast element of 180. It does come with the two slots of level 3, so that's very nice and helpful. Close range, power coding are the only ones with augmentation. The real thing here is that Racer Sharp that comes inbuilt with the bow. So just by having it 
just on your hunter, you automatically get the Razor Sharp or the Spare Shot skill. Well, probably the Spare Shot, given this is a bow. So it's a nice way of just getting that feature and doing some consistent little outburst of damage with the Blast Element. The only bows I don't have, and we'll probably go back with to the Smithy to show those off, because they aren't overly unique, are the other Lunostra weapons. And there is one Arena bow that is a Blast Element bow, but I've just found the Arena to not be my cup of tea. They're not exactly to my taste for Monster Hunter. I've always found the arena be a little blandish, in my opinion. So once we load up, we'll take a little run up there so I can show you off those last few bows. And that'll actually bring this little showcase towards its end. I actually should probably do, once Iceborne comes out, I want to do a little checklist of how many trees got unique weapons, or unique weapon designs. Like how many great swords got their own designs compared to how many were just the base build up. And almost try to track and see. Maybe they want to keep things diverse enough that only certain weapons got unique looks. So that way, not everybody is using just the same weapons with the same looks over and over and over again. Although, again, that theory could be kind of killed because of how the Draken armor was introduced in Final Fan or the Final Fantasy Monster Hunter crossover that happened. So that kind of took over a lot of the gear design. Because it's basically layered armor, or that was all you saw. So, we'll talk to the smithy here. Uh, we'll just upgrade a bow. Let me just find anyone here. Just a little more. There we go. Yeah, okay. So, all of those I've showed you. We just gotta find the ones where there's not a little bot. Here it is. The Great Hunter's Bow. As you can see, it's almost like an older base bone model. There's not too much really towards saying about it. It does have... Oh, let me get back down to it. Okay-ish stats, nothing too out there or extravagant. The Great Hunter's Bow, 228 attack, only 150 blast, one level 3 slot, but it actually has the biggest diversity of coatings you can really use. It has close range, paralysis, poison, sleep, and blast. It only lacks the power, but that does make this a pretty good support bow if you want to be kind of the status ailment inflictor. And as for the others, there are, that I didn't show you, our only other two are the Empress Arrow Blaze, which is, again, gives you another blast element, and the Empress Arrow Rune, which is another take on the blast. The difference are the skills you get. See, the Empress Arrow Blaze gives you the Guts skill, so that's that little threshold for health. Oh, the two decoration slots, a level 2 and a level 1, and the close range and the power coatings. Overall, I don't think it's that worth it. Because you kind of want the highest blast element you can if you're only go for a blast bow. And Empress Arrow Rune, again, suffers the same problem. You don't have the high blast element, but you do gain the sleep coating and the poison coating from the other one. You do have a hasten recovery, which isn't bad, but I still have to go for the Empress Arrow Sticks because of that skill and the higher blast element to it. As for looks, this is basically just that base bone model, but or base metal... There, that. The base metal look. So you can kind of see that tucked in there underneath all the color changes and that. But even then, the color changes help they change that up quite a bit. And the other one, Nergagante's take on it. It is the base metal bow again, but this is Nergagante's bow just before you actually go up to the final look. As you can see, it's a nice little take on it. You do see it a little bit easily through all that. Overall, though, I think the bow had a few more unique looks to it than the light bow guns did, but I, like I say, I have to check the numbers. It does seem the more I go through the showcase, the more certain weapons got the special treatment compared to others to kind of, I guess, help diversify who will be using what and what weapons you'd see. But in the meantime, that brings our little weapon showcase towards its end. So thank you guys for sticking around to see them all with me. Once Iceborne comes around, I'll probably do those again after I collect all the looks, because let's face it, it's much easier to enjoy the looks once you're actually able to see them in the training room. So until I see you guys again, please remember as always, well actually before I do that, just leave me a comment if you do enjoy these or a like on the video so I know if you are eager to see more and I can step up trying to get that light or the heavy bowgun showcase out.
I am also trying to build the channel up more. It is going a bit slowly, so if you do want to support us, maybe think about subscribing. We're always welcoming new survivors to the Survival of this community, and we're trying to make our way up through the YouTube ladder. It's going to take some time, but hey, any help you can give is more than deeply appreciated. So, in the meantime, please remember, as always, both survivors and hunters, to take care and stay alive!